actually, I don't quite understand the last week. You mentioned about okay. SGI change this again, but you say it doesn't matter. Okay, so, uh, let me explain. Okay. Can you just explain so that we have real clarity? Yeah, <laughs> Okay. Oh. Yeah, violent prayers are very, very important, but they're also very personal. Okay, mm. so he's already acknowledging in the things that he's going to qualify here, we're going to read, yes. that this is personal and specific to you. And it's very, very uh, profound. It's not something that should be taken lightly. And we have a tendency to kind of just gloss over the prayers. Mm. After, you know, after a while, it's like we've said them every day. We're thinking about other things. We're not necessarily focusing on the, the, the deepest meaning when we read them each time we read them. I'm not saying that we don't ever perceive that, okay? Yes. But, and that's not so important because, again, as, as I've said many times, like this is a complete change to add Jose Toda and, and, and Tanessa Vero Makaguchi and, and Daisaka Okada to, but this is specifically regarding the delineation of the, what we're calling the true teaching, being the Soka philosophy. That's why this has changed. This has gone from the liturgy of, of Nietzsche and Shoshu, okay, mm -hmm. to the liturgy of Nietzsche and Buddhism, to now it says the liturgy of the Soka Gakkai International. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is establishing what President Ikeda has been doing and what part of what is difficult, not difficulty, but part of his challenge in doing this lecture is keeping this text and, and, and explanation straight in a context with Buddhism in general, mm. Mm. okay, as well as the, the, the Buddhism of the sewing specifically. We would, I would consider that the, that the, the, the Soka philosophy is now really the true Buddhism of the sewing mm. because all the dogma has been cut out of it. All right. Mm. Part of this process is to get away from things that are totally priest-oriented. Uh -huh. Okay, to pray to gods as though they're outside of yourself yes. Yes. is a confusing issue, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and is yes. already contained within the practice of chanting Nam Myoho Renge Kyo mm -hmm. to the Gohonza. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh -huh. But the priests never explain that, so they would just talk about what's the original, what's the original first prayer? Praying to Bonten, Taishaku, Nitin, Gotten, Myojotin, right? You're praying to the to, to uh, Bonten and Taishaku, the son of the uh, the god of the sun, the moon, and the stars. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Then they then they got rid of Myojotin. Then it was oh, just no. Bonten, Taishaku, Nitin, and Gotten. Okay. So. They've been requalifying this all along. This has never been etched in stone. There is no Gosho on the prayers that follow Gongyo. There is no Gosho on Gongyo. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's no. what makes this an open issue, and that's why the dogma of Nichiren Shoshu, of the priesthood, was able to easily be inserted. Because people needed, if, if you don't have depths or you don't have real capacity to understand, you need things to believe in. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. So people are much more apt to believe in gods protecting them than to believe in the fact that they are the gods that protect themselves. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. So, flip the page. I have found it not necessary now. Every morning I'm kind of like, oh yeah, I don't have to read the first prayer. I pick this book up. Every morning I pick this book up and the first thing I do is go, Oh, yeah, I don't have to read the first prayer. Because <laughs> it doesn't have a first prayer in it, uh, right? Yeah. Okay, so this is the change that's occurred, that actually a change, uh, occurred in 2015, mm. uh, evidently. Uh, we didn't go get Gongyo books, so I didn't know. What I was saying is that, fundamentally, you're not out of rhythm. As, as I'm reading these prayers, because I'm just going to go ahead and go with this, by J January or by July, you'll all have prayer. I just didn't get sutra books because I didn't know that they had made this change or I'd have made sure everybody got one, mm -hmm. okay? I think you can still get these prayers online, though, if you're really that interested mm -hmm. in understanding what they're saying. But truly, what they do is they're a requalification from a straddling of the fence of old Nietzsche and Shoshu concepts in terms of prayer and structure of Gongyo to now the complete flip to this has nothing to do with priests. 
This has to do with the essence of teaching of the understanding of actual Ichinen Sanzen, as it's expressed by Daisaku Ikeda, Jose Toda, mm -hmm. Tanesaburo Makaguchi, mm -hmm. and contained within the Gosho, yeah. and contained mm -hmm. within the clarification that occurred with Nichikan, okay, person and the law, carried on from Nico understanding it mm -hmm. directly from the Daishonin rather than Nico in IKKO, mm -hmm. an interpretation that perceives the Buddhism the harvest as being a continuing process. Do you understand? Yes. So, so what he's saying, what are the important things here? All right, first of all, then we go to the second prayer of the old Gongyo book. Mm. Okay? First of all, see, these don't even say um, prayers anymore. Mm. Don't even say prayer here. But this is just appreciation, uh -huh. just appreciation of the Gohans and appreciation, prayers for Kosa Rufu. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So the second point that I made was that what has been taken out of this now is the Dai Gohanzan of the Three Great Secret Laws, which I said, that's very significant. I hope you'll always remember it so you can explain it. But most people wouldn't be able to explain it. Therefore, its significance is lost mm -hmm. in that process. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, where is the Dai Gohanzan? The first question that happens when you read this as a Soka Gakkai member, as a new Soka Gakkai member, Mm, you have to get a whole explanation of what happened to the Daigo Hunzen. Where's the Daigo Hunzen? Where's the pre... You know, mm, mm. we're leaving all that shit behind is basically what it is. We're not caring about having to explain any of that anymore because that explanation isn't germane. It's not necessary. If you embrace this teaching based on the way it's being taught in these teachings, they don't match up to the Nietzsche and Shoshu anymore. Anyhow, exactly. They do from a from a concept standpoint, but not from a dogmatic standpoint. We don't believe in the golden utterance, okay, being a thing that goes from one high priest to another mm -hmm. high priest, which then passes down through to all the members to allow them to attain Buddhahood in the mm -hmm. future. Yeah. We talk about the fact that we're already Buddhists well, exactly yeah. as we yeah. are. Yeah. This is all the shit that I gleaned from reading President Ikeda, mm -hmm. rather than just reading other things that I'd read in the past. That's the whole thing. Mm -hmm. if, once you start reading what Daisaku Akeda is actually writing, he has made a departure. And I second the departure because I made the departure on my own myself based on what I perceived in the Gosho. Okay? And what I saw in my own life, I get benefit. I don't get bachi, I get benefit. All these other people that are professing to know so much, they don't ever get any benefit. Okay? Something's wrong here. Yeah. Maybe this isn't so important. I mean... He knows. I mean, I do Gongyo once a day. I, I mean, I'm not making that as a declarative telling you you should follow me, but for <laughs> years I've been doing Gongyo once a day. I started doing A and C way before they cut out A, B, C. Right. I did it on my own because I needed to chant Daimoku. I was tired of chanting for 30, 35 minutes in the morning doing Gongyo and not getting any Daimoku in. Mm. I did all these things on my own. And then, strangely... The Gakkai did the same thing. So I don't have to say, hey, I did it that way first. <laughs> you know, that's not the important point. The important point is that my personal sense mm -hmm. was validated by the actions of Daisaku Ikeda, as far as I'm concerned. Okay? And, and he doesn't suddenly get to become a god that's all-knowing. And if he doesn't, you know, it, that isn't the way it works. That isn't what the teaching that he's even professing is. And if you read enough of the Goshos, that's not what the teaching of the, of the Daishonin is either. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. So, so we've, we've done away with the reference to the Dai Gohonzon. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yes. Okay, oh. so that's not necessary to explain because the essence of the Gohonzon yeah. is Nam Myoho Renge Kyo. Yes. Okay? Or pardon me, the essence of the Lotus Sutra is Nam Myoho Renge Kyo. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, the the, the Gohonzon is the embodiment of the nam yoho renge kyo thus come one's life. Now, it doesn't get into that, but that's what it's actually saying there. All right? He's then talking about um, a qualifying uh, gratitude to Nichiren Dai Shonen, the Buddha Latter Day in the Law, and mm. to Nikko Shonen. Okay? So Nikko immediately already gets the mentor disciple. You don't have to go into Nichimoku again. Nichimoku was here. Okay? Mm -hmm. The, the, the third high priest yeah. in the Nico line. Mm -hmm. Actually, the second high priest after Nico, okay? Mm -hmm. who, who actually served the Daishonin himself personally. 
He was always representative of the spirit of Shakabuku and the vow for Kosen Rufu mm. because Nichi, Nichimoku died doing Shakabuku. He, was, he like did Shakabuku to the last moment of his life. He, resi he resigned his position as high priest in order to focus on doing Shakabuku and training people. Mm -hmm. So he's always been the extension of practice in action okay of, of, of almost a, a lay priest kind of a thing because he really went out and went out and did it you know he didn't have people come to him he mm. went out and, and went to them all right so that then qualifies everything that they've mm -hmm. changed here in in the second or this is now appreciation of the ones it's the first prayer all right so all of this is actually tracking with this less dogma mm. okay then when he talks about, uh, uh, they, they go into profound appreciation for the three founding presidents. Yes. Mm -hmm. They've taken the first part and they put that into, that's actually a prayer for Kosa Rufu, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which yeah. is what this is all about. I pray for peace throughout the world. Yes. That's what yes. this actually is, is a prayer for Kosa Rufu. So this really doesn't belong here. It belongs here. So they figured, okay, let's take it and put it there at the top of prayers in general mm -hmm. as Buddhas yes. for Kosen Rufu, for widespread propagation. As Buddhas, this is what we chant for, mm. right? For everybody to become Buddhas, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. But at the same time, we must acknowledge this departure that has occurred quite by accident. Was President uh, 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 Makaguchi ever in any way separated from the priesthood? No. There wasn't anything about him that ever got separated from the priesthood until they took on the talisman of Shinto in World War II. Mm. Yeah. That's when he had his issue. Yeah. It was his issue with that that got him reported to the government that got him put in prison. Yeah. Yeah. That dragged Jose Toda, who really wasn't inclined to get into all that shit into prison out of a sense of devotion to his master. Or else he wouldn't have gone. Mm. And he would have definitely left if, 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 uh, if Makaguchi would have left. Why did he stay in prison? Because Makaguchi wouldn't leave. That was the reason he didn't leave prison. Okay? He didn't go into prison with the same attitude that he came out of prison with. Don't forget, he attained Buddhahood. Yeah. He realized he was a bodhisattva of the earth. He perceived for the first time the Soka philosophy as it had been basically founded with the value creating the first of all where did the soka philosophy come from its roots are in makaguchi's teaching yeah. Yeah. what mm -hmm. is makaguchi's teaching is it based on nichiren buddhism ultimately yes but not initially initially it was a value creating educational system yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it was all about causality it was about creating karma in your life through your actions it was about taking action that's the Soka philosophy joined with the truth of Nietzsche and Buddhism yeah. that allows Kosen Rufu to occur. Okay? That outward momentum of propagation didn't occur until Makaguchi introduced it. Let's go get more teachers to be involved in Gokuyukai or whatever it was called, right? All right. So then Toda has his experience in prison because of his mentor, not because of any Nietzsche and Shoshu priests. All right? That's what led him to perceive and understand. And then he carried that same spirit of the Soka education, whatever, the Gokuyukai, into the Soka Gakai. Say, let's, we're going to go do this, but we're not going to limit it to teachers and educators. We're going to go do this as a lay organization. Now, this is also during the period of the new religions in Japan. Okay, So from the 20s, there had been religious individuals that had been going through a process of reinterpretation almost creating their own sects, okay, uh, in Japan. It wasn't just Nichirenism, but there was, Nichirenism was one of the things that got ch 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 chopped up by true believers that had a new message that superseded the dogma of the temples, okay, and inspired others to think about these teachings differently. That's what uh, Makaguchi and Toda were actually doing. Okay, that's why there were issues with the temple. They weren't just devoutly doing whatever the high priest, you know, the priest said. They were exemplifying the teaching in their daily life, which was to go out and propagate. That wasn't part of the temple's deal. Okay, yeah. understand? Yes. All right, so 
All they've done here then mm -hmm. is they took, they qualified, requalified this. Yeah. They took this part and put it where it really should have been in the first place. Mm -hmm. Okay, they left this one alone. Okay, and then with this starting out the fifth prayer, you go right back into the whole things. Don't forget the original, the original prayers qualify this as, whereas this is, um, I pray to bring forth Buddhahood from within my life and accomplish my own human revolution. Yeah. What did that originally say? Does anybody remember? I pray for forgiveness for my slander. Mm -hmm. Completely oh. different direction mm -hmm. of attack. Mm -hmm. yeah. yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. I'm guilty, I'm terrible, I'm bad. That's already prefacing you can never be the Buddha. Mm. This is saying you can be the Buddha. This is the way to pray for exactly the same thing, but with the proper, appropriate... Did I just no, snot no. on myself? No, okay. No, no, no. Do you understand? Yes, sure. mm. So you have to remember what preceded these prayers when they were Nietzsche and Shoshu prayers. Mm -hmm. Okay? And the changes that have occurred now transitionally, I don't know that there was this thing that said, okay, well, every three or four years we'll slide it in. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll slide in another change. But that's the way it's worked out. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Okay? And President Akita stayed alive all this time for that mm -hmm. to occur. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right? Mm -hmm. So now, so then he finishes it up. It's, it's, the rest of it is exactly what we've always been praying about. Yeah. Deceased relatives, now we add fellow members. Mm -hmm. We qualify friends, all right? Mm -hmm. So we qualify the different aspects of relationship that we have in our life. Mm -hmm. We have friends, we have relatives, we have fellow members. Fellow members are fellow Buddhas. Mm -hmm. They're qualified mm -hmm. separately. They have, we're talking about people that have relationships with Gohonza. Relatives are people that may or may not have relationships with Gohonza, but they have relationship with us, which is the same thing as the Gohonza. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? okay, all right, mm -hmm. and friends, of course, we want to drag them along too. There's a reason based on dependent origination there in our lives as well. Okay, so that's what I was trying to say. These prayers aren't so specifically important right now for you to embrace like, oh, I, I got to get the new prayers in. So you can pray however you want to pray. These are still just a guideline. Yeah. Okay, these are still just a guideline. The real basis of the per silent prayers President Kate is going to say in just a minute is what's in your heart when you say them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? And that's what you should be focused on. We should really be very careful about blah, 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 blah. Ding, ding, ding. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Because we can very easily go there. Yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. Nobody lives up your We can very easily go there. So we have to understand that that's significant and important, or we can't teach other people the appropriate and proper uh, approach. Okay? That's why President Kata goes to the trouble of putting a section, a whole section, saying, I'm going to end this by talking about the silent prayers. Like, from what? Where is that coming from? Because I want to get it in. I want you to know what I got to say about that. I want it in writing. Okay? Are we ready then? Yeah. Yes. Are we already rolling? Yeah. We're already filming? Oh, we've been filming all this time. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you. Uh, again, if there's any questions about any of this stuff, don't ever hesitate to ask, and I so appreciate you asking so that I can qualify that much more clearly than I did last week. Because I, I thought I, I felt I kind of left it like mm -hmm. last week I was a little bit out of it. I was still jet lagged out while, while you guys were here. Um, <laughs> got a new massage table over there. A beautiful thing has started to happen in our life. Every Tuesday we have a masseuse come over. <laughs> <laughs> and this guy is like professional. He, he works at one of the big massage places. So we get okay. a deal. Okay. All right, so we're doing chapter 37 on page... Uh, 369, 70, 71, right? Mm -hmm. That's where we're starting from right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. Heart of the Lotus Sutra. We're going to maybe finish it tonight, guys. There's only three chapters, and the first two are kind of short. Mm -hmm. So, Nyo Izen Hoban, Ijo Shoko Jitsu Sai Ni, pardon me. Nyo Izen Hoban, Iji Oshi Ko Jitsu. Jitsu zai ni ganshi muno ze komo ga yaku ise buku shoku gensha. He is like a skilled physician who uses an expedient means to cure his deranged sons. Though in fact alive, he gives out word he is dead, yet no one can say he speaks falsely. I am the father of this world, saving those who suffer and are afflicted. 
Okay, that goes on to say, the verse section communicates the essence of the Buddha's eternal life with the resonance of a beautiful poem. And again, the emphasis being on the verse section. Philosophically speaking, lifespan is replete with important principles as distilled in the studies of Tintai's and others. Rather than expounding these principles directly, however, Shakyamuni sought to communicate them to people's hearts more profoundly and abundantly by committing them to resonant verse. He cites a cry from the heart to reach the hearts of others. Herein lies Shakyamuni's greatness. Okay? And just for the sake of qualifying this, so that we remember exactly how this actually got um, put down and expressed, is we understand that Shakyamuni preached this way because this is the way the councils recorded his preaching. But we don't know for sure if he started repeating himself in verse form or if the councils actually injected that to make those the prose sections more clear. Mm -hmm. There's no historical document to qualify that. Mm -hmm. President Ikeda is writing this as though this is exactly how Shakyamuni expressed it when he taught it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Understand that that may or may not be the case for the sake of argument, though President Kate is expressing it that way. Mm. The, 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 the translation that Kumara Jiva translated into Mandarin, mm -hmm. all right, came from the Sanskrit. The Sanskrit came from councils mm -hmm. that occurred 100 and 300 years after Shakyamuni's death. Mm -hmm. All right? So we don't know exactly, nobody knows exactly verbatim what words were used or how they were expressed. This is part of the faith that's involved in being able to unlock that door. All right? So I, again, start at the top. The verse section communication, communicates the essence of the Buddha's eternal life with the resonance of a beautiful poem. Philosophically speaking, lifespan is replete with important principles as distilled in the studies of Tintai and others. In other words, those doctrinal things where they break it down and they qualify it based on this being said and this being said and this being said. All right? Rather than expounding these principles directly, all right, which is because Tintai was going to come along and do that. Dengyo was going to come along and do that. All right, that's what their mission was. The mission of initial expression was the mission of Shakyamuni. These are all disciples of the original Buddha. You understand that? All right, so everybody has their own function. All right. Shakyamuni taught to communicate, sought to communicate them to people's hearts more profoundly and abundantly by committing them to resonant verse. He issues a cry from the heart to reach the hearts of others. Herein lies Shakyamuni's greatness, his manner of communicating these principles and teachings that later were distilled and perfected in the form of the Daishonas, Buddhism of the Sewing. Coming into contact with the pulse of the verse section of the lifespan chapter, which embodies the essence of the Buddha's life state, those living after Shakyamuni have without doubt felt that they could hear his voice and the sound of his heart across the great remove of time and space. This is, very, this is a very important part of why the Lotus Sutra has been widely loved and recited by people over the ages. But what did he also say in that paragraph? What did he qualify? He says, which embodies the essence of the Buddha's life state. Okay, is there any separation in that Buddha's life state called Shakyamuni of India and the life state of the original teacher? Mm -hmm. No, all Buddhas share the same life state. Mm -hmm. All right, so he's talking about Shakyamuni expressing the original teaching through his state of life as a Buddha. Mm -hmm. Okay, but when we say the Buddha, don't get hung up and think that we're only speaking of Shakyamuni because every time we say the Buddha, we're just as easily speaking of you. Yeah. Understand? Yeah. There's no separation between you and those others. Mm -hmm. leaders, uh, leaders should study poetry and possess a poetic spirit. Those lacking a poetic spirit will eventually lose touch with the hearts of the people. As a result, they will be unable to transform people's hearts or truly lead them to happiness. That is why I've repeatedly stressed this point. And everybody understands that you can see in President Kata's writing, he's constantly quoting Whitman. He's constantly quoting all these other poets. He's constantly quoting truth that's expressed in a manner that's universal. 
That's really what poetry's intent is, is to not be bound to a specific concept that, that, that limits it and instead is expressed in a way that the seeker, the hearer, can find truth and expression of something that they're trying to gain and attain in their own understanding. Do you, understand, you, you follow me? That's what President Kate is, con why does he constantly do this poetry? That's what he's trying to express. He's trying to express why that's important, why he does that, why it's a part of the essence of what we need to be doing, because it's an expansive way to, bre to reach a broad audience. Do you understand? All right, mm -hmm. so because it's, 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 it's capable for the individual to perceive and add their own intuitive understanding to. That's the beauty of poetry. It, what does poetry mean? It means what you get out of it, what you're able to perceive from it. He's going to throw in some poetry here later. We'll, we'll, from Whitman, we'll talk about it. He says, um, that is why I've repeatedly stressed this point. Now we approach the close of the verse section. In this passage, Shakyamuni pass passionately restates the conclusion of the parable of the excellent physician and his sick children. To save his children who have drunk poison and lost their right minds, the father, the skilled physician, employs an expedient means. He has someone announce to the children that he has died and so causes them to drink the medicine. But as Shakyamuni says, no one can say he speaks falsely. Everybody remembers that parable, right? Yes. And we understand the point of this doesn't mean that the Buddha is a liar because all everything the Buddha says is true and never false. But that does not, that, that's the whole basis of expedient means. Expedience means are not miss something that are, are not true, but they're expedience. They're leading to an ultimate truth that's not expressed in that expedient because the person doesn't have the capacity to perceive the expedient yet. These are the things that get you there. Mm -hmm. It says, uh, Shakyamuni restates the conclusion of the parable of the excellent physician and his sick children. To save his children who have drunk poison and lost their right mind, the father, the skilled physician, employs an expedient means. He has someone announced to the children that he has died and so causes them to drink the medicine. But as Shakyamuni says, no one can say he speaks falsely. He continues, I am the father of this world, saving those who suffer and are afflicted. In this way, Shakyamuni loudly proclaims that he is the father who leads all people to enlightenment. This is a grand declaration. The Buddha's mission is to save all people on the most fundamental level from the sufferings under which they labor. <coughs> what does I am the father of this world mean from the standpoint of Nichiren Buddhism? Nichiren indicates that the verse section contains the virtues of sovereign, teacher, and parent possessed by the Buddha of the essential teaching. Do you possess those three virtues? Yes. Yes, so this is speaking of you as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Uh, this my land remains safe and tranquil, attests to the virtue of the sovereign. Constantly I have preached the law, teaching and converting, attest to that of the teacher, and I am the father of this world, attest to that of the parent. In addition, the Daishonin declares, now Nichiren and his followers who chant nam myoho renge are the fathers of all living beings, for we save them from the torments of the hell of incessant suffering. So is there a separation between us as practitioners of the Buddhism of the sowing in the latter day of the law and Shakyamuni, the original teacher of the Lotus Sutra. No, we're all Buddhists. Yeah. We're all Buddhists. So what applied to him absolutely applies to us. It depends on whether or not you can perceive yourself as such. Yeah. All right? Yeah. Shakyamuni has declared himself to be the father of all living beings. Okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. Nichiren has qualified you yeah. to be as well. Yeah. But, all right? Yes. But in the opening eyes and the Nichiren... You know, Daishonin also say he, he is the, you know, the same. Yes, the same but again, way. on yeah. what basis? As the original teacher, mm -hmm. are we lacking in any aspect? Mm -hmm. no. no, we're identical, mm -hmm. but we're awakened to that fact mm -hmm. by the original teacher. Mm -hmm. The original teacher is the original teacher, the Buddha that was taught by the law, not by another Buddha. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, that's the only difference. Mm -hmm. That's the only difference. Because the, the original state of that original teacher is the same original state we possess. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. There's okay. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the whole point. Yes. Mm -hmm. Nitrin is the original teacher, and so we reflect that original teaching. But is it separate, or are we a subset of it? No, it's our original state as well. Okay? So that's why I'm saying, Shakyamuni is declaring himself to be the father of all living beings, and Nitrin has qualified also that he and his disciples who chant nam myoho renge are also the fathers of all living beings. Okay? Right now, Nitrin and his followers. In other words, again, even though the Daishonin qualifies his, his true aspect in the opening of the eyes, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. without his disciples, it's meaningless. Mm -hmm. That declaration alone does not achieve Kosen Rufu. Mm -hmm. That declaration alone does not mm -hmm. save all living beings. It's only that declaration to make aware his disciples who will come after him mm -hmm. of the truth that they share every aspect of his identity, every aspect, and therefore are as equally qualified as he to propagate broadly. That's why Daisaku Akeda can do what I just discussed. And it's not in conflict with anything. Mm -hmm. He's qualified. He's done everything necessary to be qualified. It's not predicated on dogma from the past. It's about this moment, this moment, this moment, this moment, this moment. And this will change into the future. Okay? This moment isn't going to be this moment in 50 or 100 years. All right? There will be different human beings living on earth. There will be a different phase of widespread propagation occurring. There will be additional supplemental Entities that have been given rise to that will play fundamentally important uh, roles in this process for it to occur. How do we know that? We look at this moment. Isn't that what's happened in this moment? Haven't we all arisen? Did we exist in 1945? No, none of us did. All right. Did this understanding that we're now discussing and that we're trying to prepare ourselves to propagate uh, uh, exist in 1945? No. no. It didn't yet. Mm -hmm. All right? So the fact that those things occurred in the past that meet, lead to this moment are the same qualifiers to indicate what will be in the future based on this moment. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Yeah. That's how you can, if you want to know the past, look at this moment. If you want to know the future, look at this moment. Mm -hmm. right? right? So, <clears throat> in other words... He and his disciples who chant and propagate the mystic law are the parents who lead all people to enlightenment, to happiness, mm -hmm. yeah. which is the basis of how they achieve that happiness is by bringing out the Buddha nature to be enlightened. He is telling us, in effect, to advance Kosen Rufu with this awareness, carrying on his spirit. He's saying to advance Kosen Rufu with this awareness that you are equal to me. That's what he just declared, right? Mm -hmm. Now, Nietzsche and his followers mm -hmm. are the parents. Mm -hmm. He's just said then that we must be equal to him. Yeah. yeah. All right? Mm -hmm. And what, he's, what President Akedah is then he's saying, he is telling us in effect, okay? It may not be clear to you what he's saying, but this is what he's saying to advance Kosa and Rufa with this awareness, carrying on with his spirit, his spirit of the Buddhism of the sowing, all right? Which is to preach the truth. These are wonderful words, words of the greatest encouragement. Why? Because they establish the equality of all things. We don't have Nitrin up here or Shakyamuni up here separated from us as supernatural or deified or greater than beings or entities. They don't possess a greater truth. The truth that they possess, we possess. We just have to bring it forth. It is our original state. This is a point. Okay? Mm -hmm. So the record of the orally transmitted teachings clarifies that the Lotus Sutra is the great teaching for the salvation of all people of the latter day of the law. With this work, Buddhism for the first time becomes truly a philosophy for the happiness of the people for all humankind. Why? Why with the Lotus Sutra does this suddenly, well, what, what about the Lotus Sutra suddenly makes this so? Let me read that again. 
The record of the orally transmitted teaching clarifies that the Lotus Sutra is the great teaching for the salvation of all people of the latter day of the law. With this work, Buddhism for the first time becomes truly a philosophy for the happiness of the people, for all humankind. Because to attain Buddhahood in your present form is not possible without the Buddhism of the sowing. And the Buddhism of the sowing is impossible without the predication of the Lotus Sutra to support it. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Yes. So it's, that's where it all ties together. That's where the inseparability actually occurs because you can't say one's better than the other because it's like a bunch of sticks. You take one out, they all fall apart. Everything has its necessary request, re requisite. It's required for a reason. Dependent origination. Karmic influences are why it's manifest in this moment. Mm -hmm. It's not manifesting by chance. It's manifesting for a purpose. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Yes. All right, so. Happiness of all people is Buddhahood. Buddhahood in your present form only occurs with the Buddhism of the sowing and nam myoho Rengekyo. Okay, the teaching of the original teacher. That doesn't occur in the absence of the Lotus Sutra being taught so that he could teach the Buddhism of the sowing and have a predication that allowed it to be validated. Makes sense. It's predicated on Tintai stuff and Dingyo stuff and Shakyamuni stuff and Nanye stuff and all this other stuff. It's not just pulled out of thin air. Do you follow? And Nanye, all those guys were all Lotus Sutra people. Dingyo is talking about the Lotus Sutra. Tintai talking about the Lotus Sutra. Nanye, or uh, Myolo, all, everybody, right? So it's the Lotus Sutra that starts this Negarjuna process, this Negarjuna wavelength of perception and understanding. It's where Mahayana Buddhism actually resides. Everybody with me? Okay. <laughs> It is easy to speak of acting in the interest of the world, of humankind, or of peace. But who will earnestly undertake take such action even at the cost of their lives? It's a good question. Because who's encouraged to do that? Only the bodhisattvas of the earth. Even at the cost of their lives. That's the teach we just what we talked about, right? That's what we've been talking about. That's what the Lotus Sutra, the verse section is saying. Right? So, society is ruled by egoism and desire. All too many people have the attitude, ultimately, I'm the only one who counts. Who in such a society is steadfastly working for the happiness of all people while enduring calumny uh, and persecution at the hands of those beset with delusion? Who? He asked a question there. It's us. Bodhisattva, Bodhisattva. Exactly. Yeah. But it's also, he says, equality, he answers in the next paragraph. It is Shakyamuni. It is Nichiren Daishonin. And today it is the SGI members who directly carry on the Buddhist spirit in the modern age. Now, notice there that he said you could read that sentence two ways. You could say, you could read it as all SGI members do that, or he's qualifying actually as the SGIs that, uh, SGI members that practice the way I'm. I'm, I'm instructing them to. I'm mentoring them to. All right? The SGI is the pillar of society in the sun itself because it's the only source of this teaching that I'm expressing to you now. Many fine people in the world, while perhaps not embracing faith in the mystic law, are earnestly struggling for the good of humankind. I wish Anik were here to hear, us, to, to hear me read this. Okay? So he's saying there is no real conflict between us and them as bodhisattvas of the earth. We should join forces with them. He says, joining hands with such people of conscience, let us fulfill our great mission to save those who suffer and are afflicted. Okay, do you understand what he's saying? So we shouldn't look at ourselves as some exclusive club. That's just more dogma. That's just more separation, where this whole philosophy is about the great equality. Okay, so we shouldn't perceive ourselves as exclusive, special, significant people that are unique amongst all others. We're awakened. They're not. We're not trying to save them. They're the only ones that can save themselves. Anybody, though, that has a conscience towards humanity, which is the basis of that sentiment, we should embrace. We should work with. We shouldn't reject just because they're not chanting. 
It's that influence that will allow them to perceive the truth of Nam Yoho Renge Kyo. Mm -hmm. Okay? Do you understand? <coughs> yes. All right. So, and President Ikeda, that's a complete departure from Nichiren Buddhism and most of the other uh, religious sects. Most other would say that's Fujifushi, uh, Fujifuse, you know. Anybody that's not practicing is a slanderer automatically. Okay? That's really not the teaching. You know, if you read the Gosho, you'll see plenty of occasions where the Daishonin is benevolently um, uh, kind to people that don't truly practice or truly understand his teaching. He brings it down steps. He, em he embellishes it in different ways. He never excludes people and says, well, you're screwed. You know, he always has mercy. He never, he never functions out of exclusion. He's always talking about inclusion. He's always talking about trying to get rid of delusion, mm -hmm. all right, and bring about clarity. You can't do that if you reject everybody that doesn't think what you think. Because how could you ever convince somebody to think what you think if you reject them before you have a chance to embrace them? That won't ever work, all right? So, um, it is Shakyamuni, it is Nichiren Daishonin. Today it is the SGI members who directly carry on the Buddhist spirit in this modern age. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to the next paragraph. Incidentally, let us recall how the parable of the excellent physician and his six child, sick children concludes. The children, in their sadness from believing their father has died, open their eyes and take the medicine he has left for them. As a result, they are cured of the effects of the poison. Upon hearing this, the father returns and is happily reunited with his children. What does this closing scene signify? It means that when people, the children, honestly believe in and uphold, drink Shakyamuni's teaching, the good medicine, the Buddha, the skilled physician, appears in, returns to their hearts. From our standpoint, from our standpoint, the parable describes the great benefit of practice, practicing Buddhism, that if we carry through with strong faith in the Gohonzon, the Buddhist life will certainly manifest within us. That's the Nam Yoho Renge Kyo, thus come one. All right? Mm -hmm. The Nam Yoho Renge Kyo aspect of our life. It is not a matter of something foreign suddenly appearing in our lives. Rather, the life of the Buddha that we originally possess wells forth our original state. Mm -hmm. It is revived. It is rediscovered. We experience, experience a renaissance of life. In lecturing on these lines, I am the father of this world, saving those who suffer and are afflicted, President Toda said, we can take these words to be the words of the Gohonzon. Now, did you notice what he just did again? What did he just do, President Ikeda, while he's writing to us, while he's writing this, this, this lecture? He's come to a point that can't be validated through anything other than the Soka philosophy. This is, again, this is, this is a little bit of a departure. Okay? This is the Buddhism taught by President Toda. This is the Buddhism that's been being practiced by President Ikeda, that's been being propagated. All right? So what he immediately goes in, he says, okay, I'm going to get into some tough stuff here. Rather than me saying this is what this means, let me again put it in President Toda's words and express to you the teaching of my mentor. Okay? So I don't have to argue about this is my opinion. This is what President Toda taught all of us that have accomplished everything we've accomplished since World War II. We can take these to be the words of the Gohonzon. I is the Daishonin, the Gohonzon. Okay? The Nam Yoho Renge Kyo Das Come One, the original teacher, promising to save people from all sufferings and affliction, afflictions. We, ne we need to be deeply cognizant of this promise when we read the verse section. The Gohonzon absolutely, beyond any doubt, leads to happiness, those experiencing various worries and sufferings. So he's basically saying, completely put your mind at ease. No matter what you're experiencing right now, it will all get better. You will be victorious. Please have faith in that. Don't give up. Don't even hesitate. Plow forward. This is just another moment. Let it pass if it's an unpleasant one. Turn it into something that's a victory. I guarantee you the Gohonza knows your prayer. I guarantee you the power is in your life to make this the way you want it to be. <clears throat> he says, these words represent the solemn promise of the original Buddha. Okay? So 
this is again, this isn't just about the Gohonza, which was a, just a, a inscribed, uh, you know, in, in what, 12... 73. 73, okay? This is talking about the original teacher. These words represent the solemn promise of the original Buddha. Therefore, whatever happens, it is enough that we merely continue advancing straight ahead with gentle, peaceful, honest, and upright faith. He says, it is enough that we just continue. Then we are certain to overflow with boundless life force and, when, and we will develop the greater life a life state of complete and total fulfillment. That is Buddhahood he's talking about. If we do all that, if we just continue, no matter what we continue, no matter what we continue, we will eventually attain Buddhahood in our present form. That's what he's saying. A life state of complete and total fulfillment. With this confidence, together let us continue to joyfully advance. Where, what time is it? God, I took a long time to read one paragraph. Sorry about that. All right, uh, chapter 38 on page 375. Ibon butendo jizai ni gamezu ijo ken ga ko ni jo kyo shi shin ho itsu joku go yoku ga o akudo chu ga jo chi shu jo gyo do fu gyo do zo yo sho ka do ize shu ju ho. Because of the befuddlement of ordinary people, though I live, I give out word I have entered extinction. For they see me con for if they see me constantly, arrogance, arrogance and selfishness arise in their minds. Abandoning restraint, they give themselves up to the five desires and fall into the evil paths of existence. Always I am aware of which living beings practice the way and which do not. And in response to their need for salvation, I preach various doctrines for them. Page 376 at the top. The point here regarding the befuddlement of ordinary people is the same as that in previous sections. Namely, if people think that the Buddha is always present, they may come to be arrogant or grow dependent on him and ultimately fall into the evil paths of existence owing to attachment to the five desires. In that scenario, they cannot possibly attain Buddhahood. What does that mean? They will never grow in their faith themselves. They will always understand this from the words and expressions of others rather than from the original state of their own existence. <clears throat> Do you understand? All right, so he's saying very, very clearly, you must be the Buddha for the teaching of the Buddha to live on. Okay? It can't be something that's just left as a historical footnote of somebody that lived in the past. It's got to be a continuing, existing, perpetual process. All right? Befuddled, namely, if people think that the Buddha is always present, they may come to be arrogant or grow dependent on him. They look for the ATM. They never have to know anything themselves. They can just ask questions. They never have to dig deeper and figure out how could that be? How could that be? That comes from chanting Daimoku to the Gohonza. That doesn't come from listening to people talk. <clears throat> okay? So he's saying, this is what has to be the case. For people to advance, new Buddhas have to give rise to themselves. You can't have the same people be the Buddha. You can't have Daisaka Akeda be the perpetual teacher forever and ever and ever. His disciples must become Buddhas. They must become mentors. They must teach others. They will be the mentors to those others. They'll be the mentor that those others will think of. They won't think of that mentor's mentor. Really, that's the way it will continue to go on and continue to go on and continue to He'll go on. You'll be in a prayer. Huh? You'll be in a prayer. Yes. <laughs> All right. So he's saying uh, they will, cannot possibly attain Buddhahood. They cannot have possibly attain Buddhahood as long as they always see the Buddha as somebody that was past or somebody other than who's in front of them. Do you understand? It's very important that we be the Buddha. That's the only way this can occur. We have to achieve actual each and sense, and that's why we're encouraged so vigorously to do so. Therefore, as an expedient means, the Buddha explains that he will enter extinction. We're going to, as an expedient means, we'll all seem to die. But none of us are going to actually die. And none of us are actually going to be gone. We're just going to go into coup and come back out again to do this again in a different place, in a different time, in a different phase of existence, <laughs> eternal existence. Do you understand? Yes. 
we're not going to do it for the same audience. They'll get bored and tired of us. Mm -hmm. And no one will replace us. And it's inherently important that we be replaced. Do we be replaced with capable people? That's the whole process of mentor disciple. Mentor disciple stops and ceases to exist forever the minute the disciple doesn't become a mentor. Because no mentor lives forever. If the disciple didn't also become then a mentor, the mentor disciple process ceased to exist forever. It can only be done life to life. This is a point. It can't just be dictated through reading. It's got to be perceived. It's got to be expressed through life to life communication. Do you understand? That's why we don't just get on TV and talk. That's why we go out and, and approach individuals. That's why we chant about our friends. That's why that prayer has friends, men, you know, relatives, all those people. All those, they're not going to get it from a book. It takes faith to perceive what's being expressed in the book. They don't have that faith. We're the ones that allow them to see faith because we express it as our life. Do you understand? Yes. All right. Therefore, as an expedient means, the Buddha explains that he will enter extinction. Out of immense compassion, the Buddha always preaches the law in a way as to enable people to grow and develop self-reliance. Always. That's why this is always morphing. It's never static in a box. It's never dogmatic. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. All right. Although they yearn to see the Buddha and attain salvation through the law, people may become dependent on the Buddha and gradually be consumed and destroyed by their own inner weaknesses because they never learn to challenge them. They've always got something else to lean on, to pull them out of it, to save them. As a result, they neglect their Buddhist practice because they don't ever have to chant Daimoku. They can just go hear people talk and it makes them feel better. And they finally fall into the evil paths of existence. You know this, right? I mean, really, you can see all the people that come to meetings and they walk around and they talk. They don't chant Daimoku. Very few people chant Daimoku. And chanting Daimoku is so vitally important. You have to. They fall into the evil paths of existence. They start to think that this is a strategy. Okay? It's a strategy. I understand it. I know how to work it. While fortunate enough to have met the law existing eternally, they vacillate between believing and doubting. Mm -hmm. Even doing gongyo every day. Mm -hmm. Even going to Sogagakai meetings. Mm -hmm. They don't have mugiwashi. No. Most of them don't have mugiwashi. If they don't have mugi washing, then they are vacillating between doubting, uh, believing and doubting, blinded by immediate interests and desires. Give me benefit, give me benefit, give me benefit, never perceiving their Buddha nature. They're a common mortal that has an ATM. Give me, give me, give me. Thank you, outside of me thing. Mm -hmm. Incorrectly perceiving the truth that's expressed in this teaching. Mm -hmm. Although they yearn to see the Buddha, Hang on. Uh, passive. While fortunate enough to have met the law existing eternally, they vacillate between believing and doubting, blinded by immediate interests and desires. President Toda said, those who doubt the Gohonzon because they view it from society's perspective and not from that of Buddhism have an upside down view of the affairs of the world. They view, their view of life is similarly distorted. Although life is eternal, they see only that there is death. I'll reread that. President Toda said, those who, doubt the, those who doubt the Gohonzon because they view it from society's perspective and not from that of Buddhism have an upside-down view of the affairs of the world. Their view of life is similarly distorted. Although life is eternal, they see, there, that there is on, only, they see only that there is death. They only see the limitation. They don't perceive themselves as they actually are mm -hmm. in this moment. Yeah. All right? One can imagine how the Buddha, seeing deeply into the highly unstable nature of human heart, of the human heart, is that like so important? No, it's the kids. Okay. One can only imagine how the Buddha, seeing deeply into the highly unstable nature of the human heart, must have struggled to somehow raise people up to his enlightened life state. 
Nichiren writes to the Ikigami brothers and their wives, among those who believed at first, many later discarded their faith, fearing that society would reject them. Among these are, the, are some who oppose me more furiously than they, those who slandered me from the beginning. This is a pattern uh, typical of the befuddled. And um, I, it's only another page. Do you mind if I finish this chapter? Yeah, sure. Okay. This is a pattern typical of the befuddled. To Shijo Kingo, Nichiren writes, Though worldly affairs, uh, pardon me, though worldly troubles may arise, never let them disturb you. The important thing is to advance cheerfully along the direct path to attaining Buddhahood without being disturbed each time there is, a fri there is frivolous slander or name calling to construct a solid and unshakable self. Okay, again, don't be vacillating between believing and doubting. All right? <clears throat> Without being disturbed each time there's a frivolous slander or uh, name calling to construct a solid and unshakable self. President Tota said, return to the common mortal of beginningless time. Okay, that is you as the Buddha of Kuanganjo. He proudly referred to himself as a great common mortal. Let us always be common mortals of the mystic law, magnanimous champions of humanity. Next, the passage says, Always I am aware of which living beings practice the way and which do not, and in response to their need for salvation, I preach various doctrines for them. The Buddha always knows whether people are striving to excel in Buddhist practice and expounds the law while freely employing appropriate means of leading them to enlightenment. Regarding which living beings practice the way and which do not, Nichiren says, Now Nichiren and his followers who chant nam myoho renge are those who practice the way while those who do not chant it are those who do not practice the way. In the same place, he explains that the way indicates the Lotus Sutra. So he's saying, again, what this is saying, I am always aware of which living beings practice the way. I am always aware of which, who's chanting nam myoho renge and who's not chanting nam myoho renge who is embracing their original state, taught by the original teacher, and who is not. Okay, that's not to say that those that are not are bad people. Mm. No. no, just that I know that I don't have to try to reach them in the same way that I reach those that are awakened. Mm. Those that are awakened are the way that I reach them because I don't clairvoyantly approach them, right? The eternal Buddha doesn't go to the people that don't, are not exposed to the Buddhism of the sowing and somehow come into their mind in a dream, right? How does he enter their life? How does the eternal Buddha enter the life of the non-believer? By being friendly with them, plus reaching out. By, by the Buddhas that are embracing that aspect of that eternal Buddha's life and living as the living manifestations of that eternal Buddha. That's the point. Mm. All right? There is no separation between you and Nichiren. Mm. He says... Um, uh, he says, the Buddha always knows people whether people are striving to... Ex excel in Buddhist practice and expounds the law while freely employing appropriate means of leading them to enlightenment. Regarding which living beings practice the way and which do not, Nichiren says, now Nichiren and his followers chant nam myoho, okay, I already said that, pardon me. Yeah. President Tota interpreted this pa sutra passage as explaining the immense power of the Gohonza. Practicing the way means believing in and propagating faith in the Gohonza. Not pra practicing the way means not doing so. The Gohonza knows that people, what uh, people are doing and considers how to best save them, producing punishment or reward according to their stance. The Gohonzon does not frown upon people simply because they do not have faith, but contrives to lead them to happiness on that basis. Yeah. All right, I'll read that again. The Gohonzon does not frown upon people simply because they do not have faith, yeah. but contrives to lead them to happiness on that basis. This passage says that the Buddha definitely knows whether one is practicing the way. Who is fighting hard? Who is slacking off? The Gohonza knows everything about us down to the very core of our being. We need simply to continue advancing, fully confident that the Gohonza is watching over us. This is the way. We are advancing along the way called the mystic law. And the way of Kosen Rufu, which lies in spreading faith in the mystic law throughout the world, is the unsurpassed way. It is the great way of happiness. The resonant strings of the Song of the Open Road by the poet of the people, Walt Whitman, again comes to come to mind. Whitman is our comrade in spirit. A foot and a light I take to the open road. Henceforth, uh, I, ask not, uh, I ask not good fortune. I myself am good fortune. Done with indoor complaints, libraries, 
uh, querulous criticisms. Strong and content, I travel the open road. Whitman blasts complaints and querulous criticisms. A poet knows well the nature of the world of human being. He urges us to laugh off such low-level distractions. Happiness does not lie somewhere else. I myself am good fortune, he says. With this spirit, let us advance straight ahead along the great path of contributing to the well-being of humankind, jubilantly whistling songs of joy and friendship. And so the last chapter, chapter 39, is what we'll finish next week. And so bring the opening in the eyes because we'll start it then. Okay. okay, thank you for letting us go over a little bit tonight. Thank, thank you. you. Thank Bye. you.